Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, That means you're basically like a VIP member. And there's two different levels that you can, you know, subscribe to. And you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get... Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get... Um, First dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is only on Patreon. And the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows. So if you are far away and you couldn't make our last live show, it will be on the website. We're going to record this future live show. It's going to be on Patreon, but also bonus episodes each month. You guys tell us all the time you want more episodes. This is a way for you to get more episodes. So you're going to get our basic Tuesday Thursdays that we always put out, right? But if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. I can't wait to talk about in detail some more stories because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. <laughs> they just unsubscribed. <laughs> they. This is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. So if that is breaking some of your hearts, just go ahead and subscribe now. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DT. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Okay. All right. I'm going to wing it. Hey, y'all. This is April. And this is Caroline. This is Bloody Happy Hour. Welcome to your Bloody Happy Hour quickie edition. We are here full of life and love and liberty. (laughs) The pursuit of happiness? And all the things. Oh, did you see that... The Gilgo Beach, did you? Is that one you're gonna do? Mm-mm, what is Ray that? Huberman or whatever his name is, uh-huh. or Rex? Not Ray. Um, I think he is facing uh, two more murder charges because he. Yeah. Well, they already got him on four, mm-hmm. I think. So now he has. They found two more because they did another search. They went to his house just when the wife and the kid went out of town, and then they went and did a whole another like big huge search. Wow. Yeah. So this is pretty new. Um, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, Amber Costello, and Maureen Brainerd Barnes were the four original ones, and now there's two more that they have tied. Uh, two additional counts of murder for Sandra Costilla, Castilla, Castilla, and Jessica Taylor. Nice, 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 nice. This guy is. He, I mean, he's been going for so long, they're not going to find a quarter of what he probably really did. I know. Um, okay, so speaking of serial co- killers, <laughs> let's go to Indiana, because um, authorities, what I need to find out is, like, why this is happening now, but probably because they just found some bodies. So there's a guy named Herb By- Baumeister. Okay, Mm -hmm. he was accused of luring young men to his home, gay young men, 
um, in the 80s and the 90s and murdering them. And he took his own life in 1996 when police found out it was him. Well, he has like an 18-acre um, family property. And on that 18-acre, some human rena- remains, a bunch of human remains have found. I think they have found 12 total. But now they're slowly identifying the human rena- remains. And they're linking to missing people that went missing at gay it's bars just, back then. Okay. They went missing, yeah. And so they you found bodies, found like topless, like they had on their bottoms, but like. Wait, so sense. where was this out in? Indiana, Indiana, you said, but was it just like in a field it's or something? It's their Do family we, farm property. And they, we don't know how they got to And him. it's 18 acres, so. How do you been, like. No, like, where to zoom in on the 18? Well, uh, obviously, they didn't know back in the 90s, and now we have, like, yeah. more technology to get them there. But what I don't know is... It's like a beep, 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 beep. Like, why are it? they digging, like, right now and not in 1996? Or have they have they had these bones this whole time, and now they're able to identify them? I This is I should have been an article that just came up, like... A day ago or two days ago. So um, they're working on finding more bodies, but they found 12 and then slowly identifying them. Um, Some of these people went missing back in 1993, back in like the 80s, and families just... Now, and I think families know what happened because this guy was arrested, I mean arrested, but killed himself in 1996, but never got there. Bodies. That's wild. He though. was called the I-70 killer. Oh. Let me see. Is it I-70? I think we should do it then. I-70 killer. Yes, yeah, since it, it ties into right now. <clears throat> there's like there's like the hillside strangler, the roadside strangler, the I-70 strangler, killer, murder, whatever, the Long Island serial killer. Well, we already got that one. But uh, I was going to do the roadside or hillside something, but that would be hillside a good one. Hillside strangler, no, or roadside oh, strangler. Okay. I, I guess they some are on the they strangle some on the road and some on the hill. I don't know. They're two different people. <laughs> hillside stranglers were two two men. I think like two mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. Did it. Um, let me see. Yeah, so these after he committed suicide, he was linked to a series of murders. Of at least back then it was eleven. Now we know it's twelve. Along Interstate seventy that occurred way back then. He was just a regular businessman. Like you oh, even look I think twice I do him. know that from Canada. And now a word from our sponsors. Hey, I'm Blair, and I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By the the Cover Cover Podcast. Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. (laughs) For sure. For sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. We are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Step into the unexpected with Cultastic, or How to Start a Cult Without Really Trying. A podcast where cult creation unfolds in the most unpredictable way. Join us on a unique journey into the world of theoretical cult formation. Unlike any other podcast, each episode of Cultastic is co-written in part using ChatGPT, and we let it decide our fate, good or bad. What makes Cultastic truly intriguing? We don't know what's coming each week. Together with our AI co-author, we'll discover and build this cult one episode at a time, exploring various aspects of cult dynamics, leadership, 
and group psychology. Delve into themes of charisma, influence, and the power of group thinking. It's a blend of expert analysis, theoretical exploration, and the unforeseen twists of AI-generated ideas. Remember, Cultastic is an exercise in imagination and education where we weave a narrative one episode and one tenant at a time. Curious about where this journey will take us? Subscribe to Cultastic or How to Start a Cult without really trying on your favourite podcast platform or at roguemedianetwork.com. Let's build this mission to save the people of Earth week by unpredictable week. Okay, so there is, Looks this like is what I love. Know. This is the year of exposure in so oh, many ways. Or yes. I'm not even going to say the year because things were getting exposed in 2023. I think it's just the time because the technology, um, just yeah. everything. We're exposing all the dirty people. We're exposing all the shade, all the horrible humans. About to be one exposed. And yeah, and it should be. And it should be. Um, how about the guy that got, before you do that one, how about ahead. the guy, did we talk about this last week? The guy who was uh, went to Zoom court in his car? <laughs> what was his name? What was his name? Uh, it is... Corey oh, Harris. It was all over. Corey, Corey Harris. Harris. There's so many, like, reenactments of it now. He was showing up to Zoom court... Driving, driving. the <laughs> The judge comes on, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm. Hang on, judge. I'm pulling in a parking lot. Oh, I'm at and a he, doctor's appointment. I'm he, almost there. I'm almost there." He goes, and the judge is just sitting there with his like arms crossed. He looks like the Monopoly guy. He has that like perfect <laughs> little gray mustache, with a little cut, and he's like, mm. And the guy's like, he's like, "Oh, you ready? Oh, okay, okay. I just parked." And he's this big old guy. Yes, he's this big old guy, and he. The judge is like, okay, so we have you showing up for a driving with a suspended license? <laughs> and the lawyer's like, yeah, we're going to try to uh, get him to where he doesn't have to serve. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And he's like, but he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> he's currently driving his car. And then old poor Corey, he's his like. His mouth's wide open and it did not close. Oh. oh. Corey. So you then he went better. on like Fox News or something. He went on the news. He gave interviews, t- talk about how he had his license and this, that, and the other. This kid has never, ever had a license. <laughs> he has had an ID. He's oh. gotten a new ID every year. He's never had a license. <laughs> I watched a recording about it today. And then on this article, it says, Corey is hoping to get his learner's permit on Friday, <laughs> June 7th. So there isn't even a license to suspend. I know. <laughs> so he. That's uh, probably what he wanted to say when his mouth was wide open. But he was like, no, it's sh- probably not a good he idea. He showed up to court on Wednesday. They said he was wearing a bright yellow shirt that said, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, he's internet sensation oh, now. Oh, Corey. And, and even Michigan. that judge, because there's like a TikTok page with uh-huh. a bunch of his. Um, things that he says in court, he's pretty hilarious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so now I'll follow that judge on TikTok. That's funny. Um, let's talk about a missing person. Mm-hmm. February 22nd, 1985, Sherry uh, oh, Mahon okay. was the child at the time, eight <laughs> years old, and she vanished. She was last seen in Winfield Township, Pennsylvania, where she went missing from a bus stop. Oh. She has it's not always a been bus stop. seen for 39 years. Oh, my god! She gosh. would be 47 years old Do right now. Do not tell me she just celebrated her 47th birthday. Well, 
A woman. Uh oh. Just announced on Facebook. Tell it. On the Facebook group Tell that's it now. dedicated to Cherry or yeah. Sherry. Sherry. Okay. Cherry. She went on and she was like, "Hey y'all, I'm Sherry." No, ma'am. <laughs> This is me. I'm Come just, man. look at the, look, here's a picture of me, and here's a picture of um, when, me when I was young. Oh, my gosh. It looks exactly they like look her. They look exactly alike. Or did she just cut her hair and make her face look, they literally look. Almost too much alike, like where AI could have done that. Okay, so what's the story? So, because if I put my picture up for when I was five years old, I wonder <laughs> if I would look like it. So she, but the family does not believe her because for some reason people are obsessed with this case, and there have been three other people that have come forward. Three other women have claimed to be Sherry over the years. Um, and there's only a five thousand dollar reward out for, so it's not like they're doing I'm it for money I'm or attention. <laughs> Turns out I'm Sherry. I'm about to cut my hair. Yeah, that actually does look like you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's really- but it's made like national news because the family, instead of being like happy about it, they're like, "Bitch, that's not you." They're like, "No, you're not. We don't believe you. Don't give her any attention." But here's why I'm saying this. <laughs> Nope, that looks like me. <laughs> I know. They would be like, ma'am. We're going to post that and do a poll as who is this, April or Caroline? <laughs> this one's, that's what we need to do. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> this is what I'm thinking. Why has the family, so there's been now four people that have come out of the woodworks and said, I am Sherry. Come find, like, fam, come, I'm Sherry, I'm Sherry, right? Yeah. And the family each time has been like, nope, we don't believe you. Nope, we don't even want to meet them. Nope, we don't believe you. Why are you so sure every single time? Because they know and they killed her. Yes. There's a law. I saw a law and order about <gasps> this. Um, the law and order was this girl that went missing had this tattoo of like a clover. So here comes this girl that comes up with a tattoo of a clover and she comes back, and the f- mom and the dad are so happy. She's but like, the sister <gasps> is like, it's not her. Sus. Yeah, it's not her. It's not her. Well, it came out. The sister actually killed. Because she's jealous. Yes. Because she cute. Pushed her down. or I forgot mm-hmm. what it was. So that's just where my sister, mind went on that. Yeah, got like a peg leg or some shit. And she'd be <laughs> walking over here crooked. And she pissed. Mm. So, Sherry Mahan, Mahan, you're going to have to do DNA testing because the family is not believing you. Yeah, I was going to say, did they do DNA testing with the other ones? This, like, came out yesterday, I think. But, like, oh, we don't know about the other ones? Oh. The three? Yeah. Because it now says falsely. So, I don't know if they found out Mm. that they just wanted um, attention. Just wanted some monies. Yeah. Well, look, if y'all find anybody missing that looks like me. Let me know. Because <laughs> I may be looking for a new job. The guy, the treadmill murder guy. Um, <gasps> yeah. Um, he was convicted. So we, I think Caroline <clears throat> talked about it a couple weeks ago. He was the dad that put the son on the treadmill over and over. He fell. He hit his head. And um, the boy died. How old was the boy? I think he was six. six. Oh, and the video is out there. So then the jury saw the video over and over and over. So they convicted him guilty of aggravated manslaughter and child endangerment, but he has not been sentenced yet. So 100% fair. The mom has come out and said that. So the mom of the little boy has come out and said that Christopher Gregory, the dad, mm-hmm. um, had his own PTSD where his dad did the same thing to him, would make him work out, put him on these machines, he would get sick, he had a lot of trauma, and that instead of him being better, he turns around and does the same thing to his kid and kills his kid. Why, if you know how horrible it was for you, do you do it to other people? I think it's like why drunks breed I get, drunks. I get and, if you are like, 
if it's you're like what you know yeah. and then you have all the anger and it comes out in anger it's what you know it's what you're taught it's like nurture yeah so that to me that's some justice and then we'll keep up with um what he gets convicted or like what he gets sentenced he should go to jail but oh, he's probably yeah. his life is probably gonna be in danger in jail you know what i mean People you're danger girl to him you in danger um, and then this one is local. I just saw this one pop up, I think, earlier today or yesterday. The mother of five children who authorities say has moved to at least four Texas cities to avoid CPS was finally jailed this past Tuesday after abusing um, her children. Okay, so what happened is she lived in Belmede at a hotel in Belmead, and there were two of her children were found running along the service road of 35, right there by Sam's, uh-huh. okay? Two little kids, and she had with blankets, and they were running, and when somebody stopped them, they said that they were running from their mom because their mom, like, abuses them, and that they had other siblings, so there ended up being... Um, Three other siblings, so it's an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. Oh, my gosh, skank. And they oh, had been what? moving from different cities because, wherever, like, she lived in, let's just make up, Abilene, mm-hmm. CPS case. So she moves, so they can't find her anymore, and she goes to Wichita Falls, CPS case, moves, goes somewhere else. And so when she gets caught here in Waco, they kind of put it all together together. Because the kids are finally telling everything Where, that's going what, on. Just, would they just would move like in their car and like just live in hotels? Go to s- no school? Probably. Probably. So it says there was, okay. Why do you even have kids? Why I keep having kids? That is so. So it. Let me find okay. out. Hold on. Yeah. They had bruising on their bodies. Um, and in different stages of healing, and it says the they said that their moms would hit them with a belt, a close fist, or wooden spoons. Um, the six year old boy said that his mom would put lemons in a sock and would beat them with the lemons. Oh, I'll start doing that. To <laughs> I've the heard dogs. Of oranges. <laughs> I've Just heard kidding. of oranges. I've never heard of that at all. <laughs> I sure would get a big old bruise from that. Give me a soft avocado or something. They were suffered from untreated infections, malnutrition, and extensive bruising throughout their bodies. Yeah, and this had been ongoing suitcase. their whole life. Who are, are they all b- different baby daddies? I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, I would put my right hand on it. Okay. They moved from Allyton. To Paris, to Palestine, and then came to Waco. Oh, great. Leave your shit in Waco. But at least we put at least we put caught him. Toge- yeah, caught it, put together, and arrested her. Okay, so now we got him. We got her arrested. What happened to the children? They all now live with different family <gasps> members. They do. So hopefully so it's not this, when was this members. that happened? This was this happened on June fifth. They caught her yesterday, or they were able, like, it's been happening, and they caught her, and they got the kids. Well, maybe. She was put in jail, so this happened a while back, and so I guess they finished all the investigation. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, like, if the jailed. kids, if they just, like, went to, did pe- they just, people were like, okay, I'll take a kid. I mean, they're family members. I guess somebody in each of their families Oh, because if they live them. far, they don't necessarily live with random family people in Waco. I don't know. We don't, yeah. we don't know the details. Um, but what I do know is these kids have been through trauma, Ugh. and they have, they're they going to have to start school with all this trauma. <sighs> and they're going to have to pass star tests, and they're going to have to take reading counts tests and renaissance screeners with this trauma. And if they don't pass... That teacher's going to look like she's not doing her job. I always think about, like, the trauma. Like, all these victims of these kids that are these kids who are victims, they just have to go to school. You know, like, life doesn't stop for them. 
I can't. It's so sad. You have to educate You, like, them. have no choice. Anyways, that is all uh, Let I me have. tell you this one that I just came across that's real kind of wild. California man pled guilty to killing his grandmother, whose decapitated body was discovered in her home by a friend in November 2023. Oh. Grandma, 64-year-old grandma, was killed by Grandpa Louise, I mean, grandson Louise, on November 2nd in Santa Clara, in Santa Rosa, California. Um, he had come home after he had just been released out of state prison. Okay. He was serving time for an assault and weapons possess- possessions charge. And he was the very first suspect from the beginning. They alleged that after the murder, he killed grandma in a target targeted attack, leaving the scene with her head. He brought that head with her. Uh-uh. He wasn't. Yeah. He then on the next day or whatever, entered a guilty, guilty plea. Uh, one of the um, neighbors, let's see, do, 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 arrested him. They added that charge with violent. Yeah, one of the neighbors uh, identified the remainder of her body. Where is it? It's just in the house. Yeah. Santa Rosa, yeah, uh, following a report of a homicide when they found her decapitated body. Uh, and that's when they made the report and made the arrest. And her body was discovered by her friend, according to her neighbor. Oh, okay. The neighbor reported it, but the body was found by the friend. Which is great. I mean, wow. Um, and then she said that they were like, uh, it was a normal, the victim's house was a normal place, normal, happy place. And that Ela, Elava, grandma, sounded surprised and happy to see her grandson Mm. like because he had just gotten out of prison she's like oh my gosh like sit down and let me make you some porridge i don't know (laughs) and so um i guess a few hours later the the friend saw jessica or grandma running around acting crazy and she kept yelling no head no head (laughs) a few hours later jessica saw a friend of elva's Panicking and running and screaming around the house. She kept yelling, no head. <laughs> wait, Elva, oh wait Elva is the lady. Elva is the grandma. Who was killed? Elva. Elva, okay. Elva, I kept calling her grandma. So the friend found her and was like, A few like, hours later, no Jessica saw a friend of Elva's panicking and running in and out of the house. She kept yelling, no head. No head. <laughs> I could go multiple no ways. What song is that? You never want to hear your neighbor say no head. <laughs> That's one thing you never want to hear. Okay? But you know what? She was a very loving person. She was adored dearly by all her grandchildren except for the one. Oh. And Luis did not disclose a motive behind his killing. And he's expected back in court on June 27th for his sentence. My God. When we were just... You mentioned Cherry, and I kept thinking Cherry Papini. Because why not? And now I see an article about Sherry Papini. She's right. writing two books. <laughs> Man, she's about to go right back into jail. Don't they tell you that if you are going to write a book, she's you're, a nut, uh, she, we got Corey Richards wrote a book about daddy who daddy died and oh, poor us, bitch in jail, uh, charged <laughs> with his murder. We got Courthouse Becky writing books about Alec <laughs> Murdoch case. She's now she's getting all these charges on her for doing all this stuff, stealing money and blah, blah, blah. She probably about to go to Sherry, jail. What could her book actually be about? Like, sorry, my, I lied. Uh, Here's my explanation. Uh, maybe it's going to be like, why I, I did it. She likes it's gonna, the famous. She, li- yeah. she likes the fame. Yeah. And then um, to end, Gypsy Rose is, um, is coming out. Her Netflix series. About her post jail time, there has been cameras on her and her husband this whole time. Mm-hmm. Remember, they announced that they were divorcing. Yeah, yeah. This and was now not... we'll be able to see all of it. Yeah, and her new face, and her new Netflix series, and her new cosmetic surgery. <laughs> we'll just see. 
Okay, that is it. There's our quickie. We will see you Thursday for a full episode. Where we be going? We be going to... We be going to right here. Ro- we're staying home. We going to Robinson. Robinson, Texas. We going to Robinson. You have four guesses of what it is, y'all. We'll see y'all Thursday. Don't forget to... Stay aware. Stay alive. And always, BGTF. Bye, y'all. Okay, bye. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.